back with you again this week for another rendition of Ronnie Road Designs. I like to, first of all, welcome each and every one of you back again to uh, my channel. Uh, and if you don't know who I am, I'm Ronnie Rowe. I uh, do cross stitch designs. Uh, been designing now for about 42, 43 years and uh, still at it, really enjoyed it. Uh, I don't just do the stitching, I stitch all my own designs, but I'm the guy that does sit back and draws everything out and does the design work. So anyway, really love to do it over all of these many years. First of all, I'd like to welcome each and every one of you back again with me. Got my teleprompter with me this week, so I'll know what I want to talk about. I'm going to do a little bit something different this week. Um, you're going to see several videos, uh, short videos of the process I go through uh, building the frames. As you probably, the folks who have seen my videos before and uh, and probably know that I do a lot of my own work as far as building the frames, doing all of the matting and uh, for my designs. Um, what I'm going to be showing you is short clips about how I go about uh, doing the uh, framework and also the mat board and how I go about framing one of these uh, pictures. And the one in particular that I'm going to be showing you is the one I just finished up. It's called Red Bench. Uh, I've got all the stitching done. I've got it all framed up. Everything is complete. And you're going to see that very shortly. But uh, first of all, um, I want to thank, uh, first of all, we need some uh, housekeeping here. I like to, uh, first of all, thank Karen Bug. Karen has got a uh, floss tube channel. It's called the Needle Bug. And she was so kind and gracious to have me come on several weeks ago and uh, for about an hour and we were live on a Friday night answering questions that uh, viewers uh, had for me and also for her and uh, really enjoyed it and really, really appreciate Karen and all of her hard work and setting all of that up. And uh, she was very gracious to do that. And I, I really do thank her an awful lot for that. That was, that was a real treat for me to be able to sit back and do something like that. Uh, so anyway, thanks to Karen. And if you get a chance, go out and watch her channel. She does a lot of sewing, showing you various techniques in needle in cross stitch uh, techniques that I don't do because I, I only use 18 count material on my designs. But um, Karen, Karen will show you some new techniques and I uh, think you'll get a lot out of it. Um, so we're going to build a frame. We're going to show you some of the steps I go through. Uh, these are going to be some short clips. And so uh, what we will do is take uh, go into it from right now. So I'll be back after these short clips to uh, explain a little bit more about what I was doing. Uh, so Here's hope you get chair. some enjoyment out. And what you are looking at are strips of one by twos that I have purchased from Home Depot. And what I'm going to be doing there is measuring these and cutting them and doing the rabbit on the inside to accept the glass, the foam board, which my uh, materials mounted to with two pieces of mat board. Uh, but anyway, this is starting of the process of building the frame that uh, you will see developed in the next videos. Boards, so these one by twos that I purchased, and I have marked out two 24 inches and two of them, the sides will be 19 inches. So the inside of my frame will be 24 by 19. And that will allow me three inches around for matting. So right now, I'm, what I'm going to be doing is taking on a mark on the end and cut these at 45. And I'll show you in a second the four sides to the frame. There are two at the top. There are 24 inches, which is the inside right here from point to point is 24. And the other two, the bottom two, are 19. And what I will do now is take the two 24s and put them back on my chop saw to make sure they're both even before I do any routing of the rabbit that goes in the back of the frame. And the 19 sides, so they're exactly equal. And I've cut the 45 on each corner so that you'll see the frame when they're coming together 
they'll be like that with all four corners. And uh, they're pretty tight. And um, after this, what our next step will be is to go onto the back of the frame right here and put a rabbit in with my router. That is the area approximately a quarter of an inch that accepts the glass, the foam board with a piece of material matted on it and two pieces of mat board. Yeah, now is my router. I've got everything set up and I have my rabbit blade in there. And on this blade, you have a ball bearing, which the piece of wood will ride on and it will cut the rabbit this deep, a square cut. And what I'm doing on the inside of the frame, along this edge, not the outside, the inside edge right here is where I'll cut the rabbit. And I will move this through the router. And once I do that, I will show you the outcome. Uh, what I'm gonna show you now is the routing process. I've already done several of the pieces, but this last piece, I'm gonna show you how I run it through the router. So. I hope these short videos showed you some the process that I go through with my frames and what I do with the building of the frames, the wood, the routing, and so forth. Uh, one thing I want to, first of all, uh, tell each and every one of you, using these pieces of equipment, the saw and especially a router on a router table, these, these are very, very dangerous pieces of equipment and I in no way advocate for any of you to go out and buy any of this equipment to do it. Uh, you ought to, you ought to really, you've got to have a lot of practice and a lot of, uh, uh, you got self-confidence before you start using one of these pieces of equipment. They are dangerous. So by no means am I telling people to do that. There's other ways to get your pieces framed and they are frame shops. You can go to Michael's or a uh, craft store and buy individual frames. I know they have frames, various other places in your area that you might want to look out, look, look into. Uh, but in no way should you just go out and try to do some of these techniques that I showed you uh, without first having some uh, a lot of experience using these machines because they, like I say, they are very, very dangerous. And I, I again, I don't advocate anyone going out and doing this on their own. But I just wanted to show you what I go through um, in my making of my frames and. Uh, so anyway, now what I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you after the frame is all built, you're going to see a short video on the process I go through. And this is done on a table that I have in my home that I lay out and how I cut the mat and what I go through with a, a framing, framing the individual picture. So be back after that to discuss a little what you're bit you're looking more. at right now is the frame I built uh, and two pieces of mat board. This is the white mat board and the inside red mat board. That's gonna be the inner mat board on the frame. And when I turn this frame over, you will see the rabbit right in here I cut in this area right here. That's where the uh, foam board with the piece of my materials will be mounted to that along with the two pieces of board and I'll uh, show you this once I have that I have my two pieces of mat board the red mat board along with the white mat board along with my foam board which I'm going to mount the material to the next step would be to cut the center out of the red mat board for the opening and I'll do the measurement on that after I mount my material to the foam board uh, then put it in the rabbit. So that's where we are right yeah, now so with I'm the framing process. my mat cutter and I'm putting it on the line that to cut the center of the mat out. What I do is eyeball this about a quarter of an inch or a little bit more. And then with this metal guide holding it real tight, I will go down 
to my mark like so and then I've got my cut right there okay. I know it's hard to see but what I've done is cut the center piece out right here of all sides and that is my outer mat now I'll do the same thing for my red, which will be the inner mat. And as you can see, I hope you can, there's a bevel edge on this all the way around. What you just looked at helped you in some way seeing how I go about double matting a picture. Uh, the one I did was a red door. And uh, the techniques and what I use, you can see my mat cutter is a very simple tool and it takes the blade and puts it at a 45 degree angle. Uh, think, I think what I found out, one of the real tricks to cutting a good mat board is uh, you got to hold everything tight. Everything has to be tight. You can't let it slip because if you let it slip at all, you're going to get some waving into your cut. and You don't want that. Um, but anyway, I hope this was helpful in some kind of way. I told you last week or two weeks ever when we had our last video that I was going to do something like that. And this is the process I go through. Uh, right or wrong, that's what I've been doing for a long time. So anyway, that's what it is. All right, now, red door. I finished it, got it all framed up. And what I did, I framed it without glass. And I purposely did that this time because I knew I was going to be making this video. And I wanted to show you the piece without any reflection on the screen. So anyway, this is red door. All this is what happens to you when you get old. It's not red door, it's the red bench. I don't know why I have red door on my mind, but my apologies, it is red bench. There, and you can see the, the uh, what I did with the frame, and this is a, I've spray painted the frame, the same color right here I did on this roof. I thought that would stand out fairly well. I know that's, maybe you can see it right there. Yeah, I think you can. But anyway, this is red door. And like I've told you before, uh, this is 19, this is 19, 19 by 24. Um, that's probably what I normally do on a lot of my designs. And so um, I like that size. And I particularly, this looks a lot better now that it's all framed other than on a piece of foam board that I show you my process as I'm going along. Uh, what I really particularly like about this picture, and, and it came together very well, is the area, is this area up in here, right in here. This is what I really like. I, enjoy, I really like the path coming up. And the fading of the tree is going back, and especially this tree on the side you see right here. Um, that gave it an effect, an illusion, if you will, of going back, give it some uh, depth and perception to this piece. But that is red bench, and uh, I think it uh, turned out turned out fairly well. I'm very happy with this. Uh, not that not that hard a stitch. I think we had six or seven colors in this. All of the various blues you see in here, and obviously I had two shades of red I used for the uh, bench uh, itself and black. Um, but anyway, I think this turned out fairly well. And uh, as far as the design effort, I really enjoyed doing the design work on it as well as the stitching. And so now what I will do with this is I'll go back and the back of it you can see is a piece of board. And what I will do now is go back and I'll put a piece of glass in this, take it back apart, glass on this, and fix the back and wire and hangers and everything. And this uh, this picture will be complete. And uh, not sure where it's going to go. I'm probably going to hang this one next year at uh, Woodlawn. So we'll we'll see what happens with it. So this is Red Bench. Um, what my plans are, I've had a lot of people ask me about when will this design be available? Well, it should be available in the next week or so on my SD site. And I am going to, I will have that out there. So it will not be a PDF file. It'll be a hard copy file. So, uh, but keep, if you're interested in that, uh, check out SD, my Ronnie Rowe designs at SD, and it'll be there 
shortly. So within the next week, I would hope. So anyway, red bench. Um, last time I, when we talked last time, I talked to you about my next project and I have been saying I was going to do a project on black material. Well, um, and I was really excited about it. I mean, you know, the idea hit me. I had a good design. I started laying it out. I thought it was really going to be neat. And um, guess what? <laughs> I changed my mind. I got another idea. I, I came up with something else that I think is going to be really, really cool. Something I want to do. And um, I, people have asked me, where do you get your inspiration? Where do you get an idea? come from to to do something well that's always as i've told you in the past it's always been a problem to come up with something that um uh, i would be interested in something i'd want to do and something i thought maybe uh one of you out there might want to stitch at some point in time but uh what i came up with this time uh it was really by accident um uh, i live in a fairly large populated area, Tidewater, Virginia, um, Virginia Beach, Norfolk, the peninsula, Williamsburg, we're all in this area. So I live in a fairly um, large, large area. And um, <clears throat> other day, I was coming back from somewhere, it doesn't matter where I was going. And probably like you also, you've seen this, you've seen this, uh, unfortunately too many times where uh, you'll pull up to a stoplight and there'll be there'll be a person there um, uh, asking for money collecting money a homeless person and um, I I like so many people um, give sometimes pass it by and it's just out of mind but a couple weeks ago uh, it's been more than a couple weeks now about three, three or four weeks ago, I stopped at one stoplight and there was a gentleman sitting in, sitting there and um, this gentleman had one leg and one leg. And uh, I looked at him and, and saw him and uh, for some reason that stuck in my mind. And I wanted to do, I, and what, what could I do other than, other than give him a dollar change you might have? What can, what can you do? to help the situation. And that's not just in my area, that's all over the country. That That's that's everywhere in every big city. So I'm, I assume small cities also. Um, so what I have come up with, I'm gonna do, I am gonna do a picture, uh, cross stitch design, and I am gonna call this cross stitch design help. And what my plans are, I started looking at it and laying everything out I thought I wanted to do. And um, another lady had come in and said, why don't you do a different bench? She liked the red bench that I just showed you. But well, why don't I do um, a different color bench? Well, I got thinking, um, I'm gonna do that, but also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna incorporate that into this new design that I'm doing. And I've just started, I've started stitching on it. It's called, it's gonna be called help. And I'm gonna show you right now where I am on it and what my plans are. Again, you're gonna see a very, very rough yet start to what I'm planning on doing here. And of course, this hadn't been washed and this isn't gonna end up like red bench. You'll see it in a frame and everything. But what I'm planning on doing is coming in across here and having the sky. This is a, this is a silhouette, if you will, of a city, skylight, a city. And I'm going to have down in this area right here, I'm going to have a bench. I'm going to have a bench coming here. And I'm going to have over sitting right here. And all of this is going to look rough down in here as far as dirty, uh, sitting at a playground, sitting on that grass with dirt. And you'll see some water coming through here, the river from the. And I'm going to have a homeless person sitting here and I'm going to, he's got a sign that says help. And um, what I'm going to do with this design, I think it's going to turn out very well. I really do. I, I want to do this. And my plans on this design is once I get it finished 
and put this design out on SD websites or wherever. Um, what I'm planning on doing is every single one of these that I sell, 100%, 100% of all of the sales I get on this, I'm going to donate to one of our local shelters here in Tidewater area uh, that helps support the homeless. And so that's my plan. That's what I want to do. I think it'll be, I think it's a good gesture. I think it's going to be, I know it's going to be fun stitching it, me doing this, but um, that's that's my plans right now. And so uh, uh, we'll see how it works out. If uh, I sell one, I'll donate that to the, uh, the shelter. I haven't figured out right yet um, what shelter or what organization is going to get this, but it will be in my area. Uh, obviously, and we'll we'll see we'll see where it goes from there, and see how much um, we can get get to uh, help some of these folks out. So that's my next project. That's what I'm going to be working on. So um, anyway, that was my idea, pretty good idea, I thought. And so, um, but anyway, we'll take it from there. Um, what else is going on? I'm watching Julie. Julie's putting everything out on her channel, doing fantastic. I looked at her stuff. Magnificent. So if you get a chance going to stitching with Jules, she'll she'll love and tell him tell it tell her I sent you over there. Tell her tell her you got it from Ronnie Rose. So go um go watch her. She she's a great gal. I really think a lot of Julie. And also don't forget to go back to uh, the needle bug. That's a really good place to go to find it. Anything you want to know about cross stitch, Karen has the answer for you on that. Um, not much more going on in my world. I'm um, sitting there, got my garden all in. Everything is in the garden. Everything's planted right now. Things are coming up. So, no, not coming up. They're starting to starting to take off. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, had a class reunion last weekend. Saw a lot of my old friends that I hadn't seen in a long time from high school. I mean, yeah. We're all old. When I went there, I told my wife, I said, you know what, we're going there, all these old people. Well, I'm old people. So, um, but anyway, I had really enjoyed that. So, uh, not much more going on. I'm going to continue on working on my new design help, which I'm going to show you as I get going. And if anything else comes along, I'll put in another video and let you know, let you know what's happening. So, until then, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for allowing me to come into your home and sharing this with you. I hope you get something out of it. And uh, until we talk and see you the next time, like I always tell you every time I leave you, the number one thing I want you to do is be safe. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.